Yo, ladies and gentlemen, I'm MC Zinman, and welcome back to Space Engineers Weekly Workshop Roundup number 9. And as always, I'm bringing you three of the hottest ships and three of the hottest mods from the Space Engineers Steam Workshop page for the last week. And, <laughs> yeah, uh, those are two of the ships over there. We've actually got one over here because of frame rate issues. Freaking nightmare, but, uh, yeah, so... Let's go ahead and get to the mods first. And the first is... <laughs> I can't make this up, guys. I can't... <laughs> I can't... I can't make this up if I try... I... I, I swear to you. <laughs> In the words of the great John Jafari, I am sad I lack the creativity to make this up. <laughs> it's the landing shoe by Quega. Um, yes, this is this is a thing. This is a, a this actually exists. Uh, I don't I, I don't know. It, it's a landing gear that looks like uh, that looks like a boot. That that's literally it. That's, that's just it. It's, it's, it's a landing gear. It's a landing gear that looks like a leather boot. I, I don't know where he got the idea for this. Uh, frankly, I would actually quite like to know. <laughs> because this is the silliest thing I've ever seen in Space Engineers. Look at this! Look at this! It's a, it's a, it's a boot! It's a boot! It's a boot! It's a landing gear boot! This is a, this is a thing. I don't know, it's also got a small ship version, as you can see here. Um, I'm either proud to be human right now, or I fear for humanity. I don't know which. I, I just don't. I, so let's just get in. Uh, let's just get in the ship and, and, and test, test it. it it's just. It, I don't. I. How? How do you? How? How do you review something like this? Like seriously, how? How do you review this? I. I don't know. I don't know, okay? Stop yelling at me. I just, I don't know. So, here we are. We're about to touch down. And, um, we, we've touched down. Now, now our, our boots are magnetically locked to the floor. Are we happy? Are we happy? We better be happy. I, I know they're all askew and everything, but... You better damn well be happy. The links I go to for this show, okay? Downloading boots. Downloading boots. I I downloaded boots for this show. I hope you guys are, are happy and entertained by this. By this fact. I hope you are enjoying the show because of this fact. I hope this has brightened your day a little. Because I had to download a boot for this week's episode, guys. I had to download a boot. I had to download a boot! <sighs> yeah, it, it's got two versions, like I said, it's got a small ship version and a large ship slash station version. <sighs> it's a landing gear that looks like a boot. I don't know what to say. It's just, this exists. I'm equally as surprised as you are that this exists. <sighs> Moving on, quite rapidly. We have the 220mm uh, Ravager Missile Pod by Tumble TV. Once again, this is the guy who does all the awesome Azimuth stuff. Um, and I believe I put a cockpit around here. Um, yeah, it's a freaking ridiculous missile pod. It's, first of all, actually before I shoot it, I want you to get a look at the size of this. That's huge. That is big. It's got six actual missile tubes there, as you can see, so, um, stupid high fire rate. It's lower for ships, um, 
Uh, in fact, it says in the description, the speed is very high on large ships and stations, but it's smaller on, uh, it's lower rather on smaller ships. So we've got the small ship variant here. And as you can see, still pretty big for a small ship. I'm not sure that I quite like that, but yeah, it's, it's pretty dang big, but it's very, very effective in combat. I've actually had the ability to test it out in, um, in combat with one of my own designs. And while it's not as effective as the ISM Hellfire missiles, uh, which personally my favorite, it's pretty dang effective, at least on small ships. On large ships and stations, I haven't actually had the ability to test it out yet, but as you can see, we've got the Galente from the previous episode in front of us. It came to my attention that the Galente was actually stolen from, I believe it was Dark Lord. It may have been Darth Biomech, but um, it was actually stolen from someone else. So, uh, GEC, please stop stealing stuff. I mean, I know... I think that the Axano that I'm reviewing later in the episode, I think it's I think it's original, but please don't steal other stuff. Um, otherwise, I'm just gonna stop reviewing you, Piri, because that's not cool, man. That's not cool. Stop. No. No. Don't even think about it. Don't even think about it. Okay, you know what? We're just gonna destroy your ship because this is your first warning. Oh! <laughs> Whoa! Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. That was ridiculous. I don't know how many missiles that was in just like five seconds, but that was ridiculous. Already we've cut clean through the, uh, uh, already we've cut clean through the Galente, and now it's just pieces. Um, once it gets a little bit further away, I do want to actually, oh, good lord, look at that fire rate. That's huge! I seriously don't know what the fire rate is, but... Oh! Oh, man! That is serious damage. That's gonna be what... Uh, that's, that's gonna be, what, 120 rounds a minute? That's very, very high. Very, very high. Uh, fire rate there. Incredible, incredible fire rate. Truly incredible. I, I mean, that that's that's insanity. That's insanity. Guys, if you're looking for a missile system, get this. That's gotta be at least what in the world happened to... Okay. Um, Wally has no face. That's creepy. That's, that, that's creepy. Um, uh, no, no, uh, yeah, yeah, um, dang MCC, there's no, there's no need to turn the screen red and start the creepy music. Um, that's huge fire rate, like I was saying. And, um, the impact, the damage per blast is 400. So you only realistically need, like, one of these to deal with a small ship, a typical small ship, but, uh, the damage radius per missile is three blocks, which is not particularly big, I don't think, compared to the, um, uh, I don't think compared to the regular, uh, missile pod, but, once again, but, like, the, the fire rate more than makes up for that, at least on large ships and stations, if we get back into this ship here, I forget the name of it, it was, it's from the first weekly workshop roundup, but, um, if we go ahead and, um, unlock our boots. <laughs> if we go ahead and unlock our boots here, and actually add these guys to the hot bar. You can see that, uh, this a little bit lower fire rate. As it realistically would be, but I mean, that's a lot, that's actually, I think, a little bit higher than the defaults, um, than the stock missiles. 
So we're gonna just go ahead and destroy the Glinte the rest of the way here. Oh, good lord. Yeah, as you can see, we've just made mincemeat of it. It's literally just that right now. Yeah, it's a little bit higher fire rate than the default uh, stock sort of missiles. Not really all of that in comparison to some missile systems I've seen, but still pretty dang high. So yeah, it's a it's a pretty decent uh, missile system. Like I said, huge damage over time, and that's really what you need to look for in fighters is damage over time. Yeah, it's pretty awesome, pretty awesome stuff from uh, Tumble TV there, and we've got another. Uh, missile system, the Tellian Heavy Defense Turret, as our last mod that we're going to review today. It's by Mexpex. Yep, the Tellian Heavy Defense Turret. Uh, stats survive already, yes, elevation 90, uh, 90 degree turn. Well, I'm not sure what he means by the uh, elevation, but it's 90 slash negative 20. Never seen that stat before at all. But speed, as you can see, is. Uh, let's actually watch it turn. It's... Well, if you'd actually turn... It's kind of... It, it's... It's point zero 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 four. So, pretty, um... Yeah, it, it's... Definitely not gonna be enough to keep up with, like, fast and nibble fighters. If you're being invaded by, let's say... Sort of... Uh, medium... Kind of like... Uh, pretty much this size of ship and up that's not particularly nimble or fast then it should have you covered but I mean you know fighters are just gonna be too much for this thing let's be honest I mean watch the rate of turning here again not huge at all but I haven't had the uh, honor of actually trying this guy out and um, seeing, uh, checking out his fire rate, so, and his damage, but, uh, his rounds per minute, uh, his fire rate is 45 rounds per minute, why am I drifting? Hmm. Uh, the fire rate is 45 rounds per minute, so it really, really puts a lot of weight between, uh, into each shot is, you can probably guess so I'm gonna go ahead and have him added to the hot bar here so apology so um yeah I actually had to add a uh, I actually had to add another one of these uh, these actually come in two variants there's one with AI and one with no AI and I believe I'm actually controlling the one with the AI. For some reason, they don't show up on the G menu for stations. So that's rather unfortunate. So you have to hop into the K menu and then control them. And yeah, like I was saying, pretty slow turning rate. Uh, should be good for ships that really can't move that quickly. But um, let's actually try to fire it. Ooh, yeah, that's a pretty high impact. Very, actually, um, if we could hop out and take a look at this shot here. I know this is light armor, but yeah, as you can see, it doesn't really have that all that big of an AOE. It's a very precise sort of round. It's meant for pretty much precision shot. So um, you're going to make sure that you... You're going to want to make sure that you have your target nice and lined up and you've got uh, some important system like their drive core, their cockpits lined up, or their cockpit rather, because this isn't going to do much damage overall to them. It's not like a missile. I mean, it's a high, high impact round. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and actually try it on this ship here just to see exactly how good is it penetrating armor okay so as you can see this is four layers of solid large ship will actually station heavy armor pretty hefty stuff 
So we're gonna go ahead and take control of that turret right there, and we're gonna go ahead and see exactly how badass that thing is. BANG! Ooh, I'm... Uh, I'm not sure ex I'm not sure exactly how much damage we did. Oh, we did some damage. Look at this. Four layers of solid heavy armor, and we dang near made it through the first layer in one hit. Now, granted, this is heavy, like, heavy ship armor, so it's not gonna really get through it in one solid hit, but it dang near, dang near did it. So, just a couple of focus shots on one place, just, you know, around this area, and that heavy armor is gone. And so I can, I can imagine these being a very real problem for large ships, especially with, uh, especially with, like, uh, with, that aren't, like, very, very nimble. Just one or two focus shots in the same place, and bye-bye reactor core. So we're gonna actually drop back in to the turret and give it a couple another shots a couple of more shots and see exactly how long it takes it to make it through the first layer here. Alright, so I believe we've made through the first layer. That was, I believe, Five shots for one, for one layer of heavy armor. Yep, we have completely made it through the first layer and started on the second layer. Just five shots. And this is, this thing fires at 45 RPM. So more, uh, so almost, sort of, almost a shot a second. Yeah, if you've got a slow lumbering large ship, dude, you better hide your reactors because this guy is coming for him, big time. Look at this. Yeah, he's he's aiming straight up like, come at me, bro, come at me, cause I got that, I got that. Five five shots, one layer heavy ar heavy armor, got saw on the second. What you got, bro? Oh, Wally, you better not. Ooh, yeah, he got he got so close it sort of freaked him out there for a second. He's like, "Oh crap, I'm on the wrong end of this thing." All of a sudden, that's why his display freaked out. Yeah, that that's totally the reason. Not just a glitch, but <laughs> look at that face. <laughs> look at this. What are you doing? Um. Okay. Okay, okay, um, you just continue doing that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna back off over here and, and get started on the Exano. Mm, uh, okay, yeah, you just stay there, and I'm gonna go this way, because you can be freaky sometimes. Um, so this is the Exano by GEC. This thing is pure swagger. This is huge. This is a huge small ship. This is by far, by far, the biggest small ship I've ever seen in Space Engineers. In fact, in any game, really, I mean, for like a small ship, this is huge. It's got, it's two-storied and everything. It's, it's like, oh man, so big for, for a small grid ship. In fact, this is yeah this is what's causing all of the lag right now it's just huge no way the game designers no way keen uh, intended small ships to be this big it's huge it looks absolutely gorgeous though i mean look at this look at this this is probably also the best looking small ship we've ever had on space engineers weekly workshop roundup or a big mod showcase for that matter it's almost as big as the Dawnstar Corvette, I think. No, th there's no way it's as big as that, but it 
it's huge. It's huge, guys. And um, to get in it, I think the ramp is around the back side here. I could be wrong, but I think it is. I, I don't know. Um, when I was testing it, oh, I can't remember exactly where it is. Oh, there's a sensor here. No, that's a camera. Hold on. Ah, okay, so I just now remembered that, well, there are these buttons here. I think you press them. Yeah, there you go. They come down, see? They, they're on these pistons and they sort of extend. And you press this button and then the ramp comes down. Ooh, yeah. Check it. Check it. Slowly, surely, mysteriously. It's like it's revealing itself to you. And then, bang, you're in the ship. You've got gravity and everything. I'm going to go ahead and seal the ramp up. Make sure we're well clear of it. Actually, we're just on the mechanism there. That's not safe. And then, slowly but surely seals itself up. And we're going to get started. Yeah, this is the interior. Look at this. It's huge. The first room is massive. It's gigantonormous for a small ship. Over here, we've got uh, these maglocks. I'm not sure what those maglocks are there for. I think they're maglocks anyway. But you've got a dresser. This is the crew quarters. Of all the things, the crew quarters had to be in the airlock. Kind of weird, but so we've got a container here. Um, so uh, you can store all of your precious little items. Um, and is that uh, part of an oxygen block? I can't exactly tell. But then over here, the crew bunks. It's a crew of, I believe it's more than two actually, but so back here, you've got a crew of two and then some spare sort of tires and stuff laying around and a passenger seat, some place to store all of your uh, possessions. And then here, we've got this awesome looking door and then up, 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 it goes, and we are, well, this is the AI core, and we've got, um, uh, well, yeah, the battery core, I should say, and uh, left reactor store. Ooh. Oh, I never noticed that before. So you can actually get to the reactors through that door, like, um, can we actually fit in through there? Um, not really, but we've got reactor controls here. Okay, that was a weird sound. Um, and we can actually toggle the reactors on and off here. That's cool, I, I never noticed that before. And then I assume that this is another one. Um, hello, T. There we go. Uh, yep. So you can actually control your reactors back here. It's almost like a major engineering bay. That's kind of cool. I wish I'd noticed that before, too. That's really, really cool. And then this is the conveyor system here just overhead. So these guys run back here and then feed into the reactors. And yeah, it's also got, in case you didn't notice, I should go, uh, I should go back out here and show you this. In case you didn't notice, it's actually got solar panels too. I was just sort of flew by those real quick. So I'm gonna actually go and show you guys the solar panels. I can't wait to get out! Stop being so slow! Um, so their solar panels are around on the sides. And they're actually, I believe, extendable. Yep. Um, where are they? I believe this is them here. Yeah, these are the solar panels. So, they are, I believe, extendable. Not very much, because you've got the engine a cell sort of getting in the way there, but... Yeah. That's, uh, it's sort of a hybrid, almost. Is uh, It can run off either uranium or batteries, so... Pretty cool, and, um... Yeah.
so we're back in the battery management area if we continue forward this is a cockpit well you may think that really all this space and that's all all we get I mean this the ship is huge uh, well not to worry it's, it actually gets a little bit bigger but this is where the gunnery sergeant the gunnery chief uh, where Garrus would sit and um, yeah, just control the guns and everything. T, T to get out. Thank you. That was weird. I almost got hung up in there. But, so I believe the stairs should be around here some Thank you. That was weird. I almost got hung up in there. But, so I believe the stairs should be around here somewhere. Ah, here they are. Uh, they're kind of hidden, so if you, so when you come in the loading ramp, they're just to your left, and then you go up and you go up and yep, it's just it, it's it, it's just huge. Like it's huge. The Axano. Da -dun -da -dun. I don't know what that theme song was, but so we're gonna uh, turn around and proceed to the right from the top of the staircase and this is your cryo chamber here uh, it sleeps one person well i see i say sleeps it's okay for some reason the game now thinks that we're trying to view the ship i don't know uh, well it sleeps it actually does sleep me <laughs> I was not expecting that because now since the latest update yeah, it's sort of stand up in the bed which is a little bit weird that sort of sleeps more in the cryo chamber and you've got a medical room here so that's always very very handy and then here is the toilet just almost basically straight ahead when uh, when you come up the when you come up the stairs you've got a toilet complete with a huge shower and the door, you can't actually close the door, which is a little bit unfortunate. But, yeah, gigantic shower, look at this space! I, uh, granted, I don't have a towel, I don't have any place to sit to dry off, but, you know, I can always sit in the toilet, that's always cool too. And, you've got the sink, and your face goes here, so that's a mirror, I guess. And then, if we go straight through... Here, through this door here. This is the AI core. That was a battery core down there, my apologies, but this is the AI core, and look at all the timer blocks! Look at all the timer blocks there! Just look at them! So many timer blocks! And it tells you what they all do. I can't see one that well, one that doesn't have a purpose. And it's just huge. This is the AI, AI core. It's almost as big as the AI core. Well, part of the AI core from Siri. So, um, yeah. Timer, HEK, uh, HEKC. That's uh, those are the armaments. By the way, uh, it's a. Uh, by, by the way, we've got six 8.8 .8 centimeter HEKC um, main guns and. The, one of these guys actually sets them off like in uh, like in succession so it's like it's not like one continued volley it's like the gun on the far right shoots and then each gun shoots successively until it gets to the far left and then yeah it lays down a lot of damage on targets and such and yeah we uh, actually do have quite a lot of um, uh, quite a lot of timer blocks that don't really serve a purpose as you can see these are empty otherwise they would tell you what they did but then we move straight through here and we've got a kitchen and a dining table complete with damn the most comfortable dining chairs I've ever seen well uh, yeah well we sort of sit like depending on your perspective of the world, we sit sort of above 
the dining table, which is a little bit weird. But, look at this dining table. I mean, that looks so comfortable, doesn't it? It's, it's a little bit low. Granted, it's a little bit low. So it's more like a coffee table where you can sort of kick your feet up and just chill out and watch something perhaps on that uh, screen there. Uh, is that... This is time... Time and date. Hold on. Oh, uh, okay, never mind. I, I thought that was taking my... Um, I thought that was my actual system date that's on my computer. It's actually not, but still, yep, yeah, it's it's a it's a display with the with the time and date. I assume of the, uh, I assume that's when the ship was made. Uh, no way to tell. Oh, yeah, it does actually have more crew bunks here. I cannot believe that I missed these the first time I went through them, but so to prove my point about the fact that you sort of stand up in bed now. Yep, you sort of stand up in bed now. I'm standing up. I believe my arms... Well, my arms aren't sort of spread out, but... Yeah, you sort of stand up in bed. And we're gonna open this door. And then I believe this is the cockpit. No, this is the... Uh, this is the weaponry bridge. Or the... Not the weaponry br bridge. The systems uh, control area. And then this is the bridge here, so yeah, look at that. Just look at that. That is how long the ship is. That that's how long the ship is. <laughs> I, that, that's 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 long. That's very 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 long. We go all the way back through here. Hope I don't hit anything. And then go all the way back here. And then that's the cockpit way up there, like two miles up there. This is a long ship, guys. This is a long ship, the Axano by GEC. Oh, we did actually miss a room. I believe this is uh, another bathroom here. No, it's, it's uh, the captain's quarters. I, yeah, never mind. LCD panel bedroom, toggle block on off. So uh, that actually toggles the TV on off. My favorite channel, guys. What can I say? Fuzz. I I enjoy watching Fuzz. Uh, that that that's just my favorite thing. Uh oh, what, what's what's moving? Um. Oh, that's some um, Wally. He's found me, and now he's trying to get into the ship. Okay. Um. Well, Wally, I'm gonna open the door for you, buddy, and then you can hang out in here. That's weird. I didn't expect Wally to find me. So yeah, you can sort of hang out in here, buddy, and then we're gonna actually go up and, well, that might be a little bit rude, but whatever. We're actually gonna go up and fly this beast. It's gonna be awesome. I mean, it's, it's a pretty slow ship. Oh, by the way, a pantry, uh, two as well, also, and yeah. So we're actually going to go up and fly this. It's not going to be particularly fast, but it's going to be particularly awesome because this thing flies. Well, as you can see, we've already overloaded our reactors. Hold on. Let me take a look at the instructions and make sure uh, we've got all reactors on. Oh, here we go, here we go. sound melts my ears I've actually got from one of my builds oh, 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 oh. it just melts my ears it's so awesome um, 
there's Wally. Let's make sure we don't whack into him. Yeah, the, uh, the acceleration on this is actually pretty decent. It's not... It's not anything like the Galente, but it's actually pretty decent acceleration. The turning isn't too terrible either. Keeping in mind uh, that this is an exploration ship, this is actually sort of pretty nimble, especially for the size. As you can see, we are in the white. We are well, well into uh, sort of large ship territory at 1,341,974 kilograms. Flies pretty dang well. Um, it's nice and responsive on the turning. Uh, I do wish it had a little bit more side thrust because it uh, does seem to take a while to sort of uh, stop us uh, using the side thrust. So... There is that to sort of contend with, but the flight is just, uh, is pretty awesome for the size. It's pretty, pretty nimble, I shall say. Yeah, it's incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, Axano, uh, ostensibly by GEC, and by the way, um, this, rather creepily, it, 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 it is my system time. I, I, I'm, I'm scared, guys. I don't know why that's there. That's my system time. It is May the 3rd as I'm reviewing this, and it is 2023. By GEC, our inertia dampeners weren't on there, but yeah, we're moving on to the Magellan Exploration Ship by Grudis. Grudis? Grudis. Grudis. Yep, here it is over here. It's dwarfed by the Heger and Battle Destroyer. We'll get to you in a second. The Magellan. Hello, fellow engineers. The Magellan is an exploration ship with good speed and lots and a lot of feature. Uh, just the one, and just one feature. Uh, his living course, I assume, I assume that this is actually a male. Um, I don't see any male. Are, are you male? Um, are you male? Um, no. Um, no, you're not male. His living quarters are able to receive for crew members with all commodities needed for a long trip in space, such as sugar and water and things of that nature. Now, check this out. Um, this is actually something a little bit weird. The loading ramps are on the side. Door opening. Thank you, computer. So we're going to go ahead and get in. I uh, said so we're going to go ahead and get in. Uh, don't do this! Don't do this! Ramp left, deploy, and retract. Ramp left, deploy, and retract. T -t 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 Screw you. When in doubt, delete it. Although we've deleted these... Yeah, we've unlodged these guys too. I don't think that's particularly safe or healthy. Hmm, that's not cool. But... Yep, so those are, well, they're supposed to tell us, uh, they're supposed to tell us uh, when the door is opening or closing. The door is locked there for some reason. Don't forget your helmet or death will ensue. Wise words indeed. Wise, wise words. So we are in the airlock. You're pretty basic stuff. Well, for an airlock, this is actually rather fancy. So. Um, what's back here? Are all the doors just borked beyond belief? Okay, this is how we're going to have to explore the ship, guys. Bang! So, back here. And by the way, yes. Oh. Okay. That was, uh, that was the depressurization. Um, so back here, this is the engineering bay. We're accelerating. Okay. 
So this is the engineering bay. Tell me you would be disappointed. Seriously, there's nowhere to sit. You gotta stand up! You gotta stand up to manage the reactors! You... What are you? Are you sound blocks? I think you're sound blocks, but I could have sworn I just saw a jet flame coming out of you. Do it again. Okay. Okay, well then, um, but look, you gotta stand up for the, for, for the reactor core. Who, who wants to do that for the, for the engineering bay? Who wants to do that? Who wants to stand up? Or, or our reactors on so we can... That was the problem. Our reactors weren't on. Okay, well then, we can have both of you guys on. That was, that was the problem. The reactors weren't on, so hopefully we should be able to use the doors now. Okay, let's go and check. No, the doors are broken. Well, that's weird. Um, so through here, you've got the sort of, well, the depressurization, but also the main hallway. And in here, uh, by the way, there are a lot of these. I'm gonna check these out. These are buttons that don't do anything. This is actually a rather cool sort of touch here. These buttons don't do anything at all. They're just there for immersion, which is cool in that it sort of helps, it sort of, well, like I said, it helps immersion, which is important for a ship like this because clearly it's built around looking as realistic and feeling as realistic as possible. So these buttons, although they don't do anything, they're there for a reason because they help you feel more invested in things. Uh, I believe these, no, those bomb two don't actually do anything. So you've got a counter here and a sink and everything else. And then one, thank you. And then in here, it's a shower. It's my favorite kind of shower. Oh yeah, look at that shower head. That's just depressurizing. But also, the shower head is freaking awesome. Look at this, seriously. Um, this is the same shower that was on the CIV Nova Yacht. I did have a little bit of an episode with the inertia dampeners there, but it's sort of the same shower head that's on the CIV Nova Yacht. It's so hard to resist just sort of chilling out and just showering here. I mean, uh, no, 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 I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. I've got to keep going. So, and then uh, this would lock the door here if it existed, but unfortunately it doesn't exist. And this toggles the light in the shower. So yeah, that's, that's clearly there for a reason. Uh, cargo hold access. Can we get in you from the side? Bad choice of words! Bad choice of words! Okay, well, um, we're just we're gonna uh, move on from that and pretend I never, ever, ever said that. Oh, wait, did you say cargo hold access? You said cargo hold access! That's a toilet! We're just gonna go ahead and seal this hole up. I'm tired of being blown around! Um, control shift. Uh, well, that's not exactly what I intended to hold on. Okay, so we're all sort of sealed up nice and cozy and tight, and um, I'm crouching, thank you. Um, cargo hold access is actually a toilet. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a toilet! Why would you lie to me and say that that's cargo hold access when it's clearly a toilet? It's clearly cargo hold. I get it. As in poo. That's, that's mature. That's mature. Uh, moving on over here. We also have crew quarters. 
just off to the right side. By the way, this is an issue that you wouldn't usually have to deal with. Oh, by the way, check this. It's already over. Kick in the jams! Listen to that bass, guys! Holy crap! It's perpetually coming from the right, or the left. It's perpetually coming from the left. That's weird. That's weird. And then, okay, we're gonna have that off, and then turn the lights on, and then lock the non-existent door. By the way, that door lock actually worked. Uh, I'm not even lying. This, this actually, this lock actually works. Kind of awesome. Yeah, you have to admit, I mean, real working locks. I've never seen that before. Real working locks in a ship. That's awesome. So up here, system maintenance. Uh, computer left top PS1. I'm not sure what that does. Okay, it turned it green. Uh, turned it on rather and then hmm okay so um just turns these monitors on I uh, you are which one okay well how the only thing we have to have do we have to have six hells on this ship do we didn't have to we didn't have to have six hells on this ship that's like hell, 6, 12, 18, 24, um, I don't, that, that's too many hells, that's like hell several thousand, over 9,000 definitely, we're just gonna go ahead and fly, check this out by the way, the seats start turned towards you so you can get in them real easy, then bang, press 1, and then your source turned toward them. Yeah, welcome aboard. Thank you very much, computer. And um, by the way, in case I forgot to mention the author of this ship, it's Grudis. Um, but so, the instructions. Um, well, we just dropped into uh, pilot mode. So, one is going to fire the GATs, and then two is going to fire the rocket launchers. Three is gonna fire once the four 8.8 centimeter or uh, centimeter RQ211 cannons, and then three is gonna reverse the screens. Four is activate and deactivate stealth mode, which switches the lights on and off and um, turns the antennas on and off. So it's stealth mode, and then so um, yep. Let's actually go ahead and give this a fly. I, I don't know why I was calling out all of the freaking instructions and stuff because they're actually on the Steam Workshop page if you go and look at that. But yeah, as you can see, even though it's lighter than the Exano, it's also a little bit slower to turn. I'm guessing fewer gyroscopes, even though I haven't actually had the chance to look at that. Yep, very, very slow turning ship. Very, very slow turning. I'm having to use the arrow keys to turn it. And yeah, now we're we're drifting, we're drifting. Oh crap, oh crap, don't hit don't hit the Exano, don't hit the Exano. Thank you. Okay, we're drifting, we're still turning, still turning. Yep, but it does have a huge amount of forward acceleration because well, look at look at the look at the thrusters. Look at the thrusters. Look at all those thrusters. Pretty huge, pretty huge thrusters. And now we're gonna actually come to a stop here. You sort of get an idea of how this ship flies. Uh, very slowly. Oh, I completely forgot to disengage captain mode. But we're gonna actually ignore that. Yeah. Um. Just an awesome ship all around. You better not be a bitch and not work. Okay, you're gonna be a bitch and not work. So, that to go! And then, open it up and enjoy depressurization. And enjoy being stuck. Okay. So I had to sort of dig my way out there, but 
Yeah, the Magellan exploration ship. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's really a good ship. It's got, it's very, very immersive. You know, that's the thing. It's, it's very much centered on immersion so that you get sort of the, sort of the feeling that this is almost, uh, what it would be like, uh, what a real exploration spaceship would be like. So, yeah, big and blocky, and I just want to talk about the stack for a second, because this is something we don't see a lot on, uh, well, in any sort of ships in the Space Engineers Steam Workshop page. It's got sort of a very blocky, used almost a stack, some very dull colors. It looks like it's actually been on uh, quite a few journeys already. Which again helps the immersion because I mean, you know, when you hop in you do want to, sometimes you do want to, oh look, it looks like sort of a bus up front, but um, you do actually sometimes you want to feel like you know, you're an experienced space engineer, whatever you want to call it, space explorer, and you know, that just sort of helps you feel a little bit more immersed in the game, which is pretty cool. The whole sort of aesthetic of it. Big, blocky, used, um, uh, going through a lot of wear and tear. Pretty awesome. But now, we're moving on to the Homeworld 2 Higrin Bell Cruiser. It's huge! This is it, and this is half! scale ladies and gentlemen this is half scale this is by the magic mer bag by the way a half scale replica of the Hegron bell cruiser from home homeworld 2 measuring 600 meters 600 meters uh close to 89,000 blocks uh total a one-to-one -one scale model was in the works but caused too much lag i can see how I mean, I, I can totally see how. Uh, I'd imagine that lag would have would be a thing that you'd have to deal with uh, with a ship that's uh, that's 1,200 blocks long. That that would be a, a general issue, I would imagine. Um, it's huge. It's absolutely massive, and it comes with a few mods. Um, by the way, um, by the way. Whatever you do, don't run this on uh, on a laptop with a NVIDIA GTX 975M or lesser graphics card. You're going to want that or higher to be able to run this efficiently just because it's so big. That if you don't, it will cause a big, 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 huge, massive staggering amount of lag because it's so big. It's so big. And granted, the interior is mostly empty, but again, look at it, it's 1,200 blocks long. 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 Do you get it? Yeah. It's massive. So, yep. Uh, it's just, it's like, it's a flying fortress. It's a B-17 flying fortress. By the way, in case anything would require me to make a reference to the Homeworld game. I've never played it. Um, I've barely even heard of it, so I know absolutely nothing about it, but so we're just gonna fly in here to the hangar, which you guys are gonna love. You guys are gonna love this hangar, because, well, I just wanna make sure you're ready. Are you ready? You sure? Because if you like big hangars, you might want to take your jaw shot, all right? Have you typed it shut? Good. Let's continue. Dun dun dun! Look at this hangar! It's massive! It is absolutely huge! As you can see, I was able to park one of my Typhoon um, MRS-1 Death Hornets very, very comfortably in here. It's it's almost, I think it's, as far as a like horizontal space is concerned, it's almost as big as, well, almost, I should say, half as big as the hangar and the, um, 
the, uh, from the, I believe, third Space Engineers Weekly Workshop Roundup. And this is just one, guys. This is just one. It's got three, I think. It's three, yeah. But so, we go through this door here and into the second hangar, which is a top loader this time. And it's huge! Uh, it's huge! Look at this. This is the hangar door, right? So you come in through here. It's, it's probably kind of hard to get into. Wow, I completely, I missed it. That's, that, that's new. So you come in here and you sort of drop down into it. Kind of hard to get in because you don't really have as much space because these guys slide shut to sort of protect it. So kind of hard to get into. And once the bottom, uh, once the top one's open, you gotta wait for the bottom ones to open too. Um, if they, if they would. You gonna open? So, okay, there we go. That's better. That's much better. So it's huge. Yeah, it's actually two hangers, but the thing about this, all right, this is the resources area. Um, if you wanted to, it's sort of big enough to be like a drone bay. So you could put drones here, and as long as they were small enough to get out of that door there, you could somehow, if you're like really, really good space engineers, you could sort of tell them to go through this door and then up through there to collect resources and defend the ship and all sorts of stuff but a uh, lot uh, like uh, like it said pretty much what it says on the tin here it's a resources area where you can store your uh, goods like your uranium and other ingots and you know things of that nature so uh, yeah, pretty barren, empty area. And then this is your central container. Your big old huge azimuth container here. By the way, um, while it does look, you know, while it is mostly unmod, it does have a couple of mods, uh, like you saw, uh, the sec 10, sort of, the sec 10, uh, force fields there and a couple of other things it's got Colt's console command pack the list will be uh, the list will be available to you on the um, on the mods workshop page so you don't actually have to worry about uh, just going and wondering what all it's made up of and there should be elevators here um, somewhere around here it's got a lot of empty room so I have a hunch that this is an unfinished ship but the thing about those empty rooms is you, they can be pretty much anything you want them to be, like extra med bays, they could be uh, uh, a lot, really. And yeah, those are, oh, here are the, here are the, here are the elevators here, elevator platforms, we're just gonna stand on this and then this takes us up to the rest of the ship very, very slowly. Come on up! Alright. Come on. Almost there. Almost there. Yay! You did it! And now, we're out in... Oh, well, hangar oversight. And this is the first thing that really uh, struck me about as unfinished about the ship. This area here. Because it's got uh, command consoles in the combat bridge, which we'll get to in a second. It's got command consoles there, but it doesn't have any here. So, um, it just sort of something strikes me as unfinished about this ship. By the way, it does have diamond tech bonded glass, so there's no way you're going to get through this. Uh, there's no way you're going to get through this glass in any short amount of time. So if you somehow make it into the hangar, then, you know, your days are numbered because they're going to alert a fighter and then while you're occupied with this, the fighter's going to sneak in through the back and you're going to be toast. You are absolutely going to be toast. 
you are absolutely going to be toast. So that's like a song. But so if we go over here, the bridge is the combat bridge is actually that way. And it's pretty much the only area of the ship you can actually access aside from the aside from hangar oversight. If we go over here, another empty area. This time the blocks aren't even the armor isn't even colored. So it's a bit weird, but we go over here. I'm actually trying to remember what is over here. There is something over here. We got a sign here. Let's see. Uh, crew quarters. Oh yeah, check out the crew quarters. Huge crew quarters. Look at these. Look at these crew quarters, guys. Whoa, that's massive, massive crew quarters. All I gotta say is, don't fall out of the top bunk, because look how look how far you have to fall. That's like a story. That's like two stories you have to fall if you fall out of the top bunk. Well, you better be made to some real stuff if you fall out of the top bunk, I'll tell you that much. I'll tell you something for nothing. You better be made of some real steel if you fall out of the top bunk, because otherwise, well, you basically better be either Gareth Vicarian, James Vega, or uh, Erdnot Rex or Grunt from Mass Effect, or a Wookiee, because fall out one of those, you're typically gonna be pretty much freaking done. Freaking done. Frilling done. Hmm. Uh, yep, so we've got the same showers that we had on the Magellan over here, and then here, check this out, crew, wait, bench slash rec room. Um, you've got your tables here, and then all of your white benches. I don't actually see anywhere for the crew to cook their food. However, so that's a little bit weird. Maybe there's something, maybe there's something that I'm just missing here. It's entirely possible. I mean, look at the size of the ship. It's huge. Like, it's massive. And then over here, well, we've got this area, uh, the med bay over here. Pretty basic stuff. It's literally just a respawn area. That's all it is. It's just a respawn area and uh, an oxygen uh, an oxygen vent there is uh, you can have up to seven crew members respawn here there's no infirmary or anything you just die and then you respawn here that's the point of it basically that's it and then over here just pretty much for decoration we've got com a computer core with uh, do not enter symbols well guess what I I've entered so suck it nerd so hmm well that's that's weird and then up here we have the bridge the combat bridge a systems control right here and then the combat bridge so as you can see pretty basic ship but I mean really you you couldn't you can't really expect much else by the way this is the normal way that you would enter the ship I just chose to enter through the hangar so I could show you the hangar first but so this is the bridge. Yeah, it's not exactly the biggest bridge that ever was. And yeah, I did actually take a look under the armor and everything, and I didn't see anything like any other areas that you could go. So it's pretty walled off, which is strange. And then another strange thing is how you actually control the ship uh, from the side here. Are reactors on? Our reactors are slowly building power. Um. Oh, we are moving. I can hear the engines. Wow, this is a slow ship. Are we moving? Oh yeah, we're moving-ish. Hmm. Uh, thrusters. They got 121 of them. This is by far the slowest ship we've ever had, ladies and gentlemen. Uh. Yeah, 281,977,888 kilograms. So, almost a quarter of a billion kilograms. You can see why it's not moving very quickly. <laughs> Hold on, are, are we, uh... No, this is not a main cockpit. Huh. Well, then what would be a main cockpit? Over here? Ah, okay, so here's the main cockpit. It's a little bit closer to the center here. So... Yep, we're actually moving. We're actually moving. It's happening. Oof. 
Oh, not, not very fast. Not very fast, though. Like I said, we're just now cresting three meters a second. And I assume that we are firing on all cylinders on the thrusters. Whew, yeah. Oh, there's a problem. All these Titan engines are, don't work. Which is weird. Hmm. Hold on, let me... If you like this video, then go ahead and bitch slap that like button if you really, really liked it. And you will see more going, hit that subscribe button. Hey, I've been MC Zinman. You've been awesome. And I'll see you guys in the next video. MCZ out. <laughs>